I'm CK. Tonight we've got another kit from Veleman Wada. It is their 2x5 watt amplifier for MP3 player. Looks like it might be fun, might be a little useful amplifier for a kid's bedroom or something. We'll put it together and see how it sounds. Hope you enjoy the video. Here's the box. Picture of the unit for music, soldering, and it's level three, which seems a little high for one of these, but we'll see. Low distortion, 3.5 millimeter jack input, adjustable volume knob, blue indicator LED, nine to 15 volts AC, one amp max. Wow, that's a lot of power. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to use my 200 milliamp bench power supply for that. Let's see on the back we've got looks like speaker wire connectors a couple of voltage regulators some caps well we'll see inside uh, and then there's the URL for the build guide manual and this is out of Belgium and as usual they use uh, an outer sleeve on top of a generic brown box. I appreciate that. That means they can do more with less. Let me get it open here. Piece of paper first. Let's see what's on the back. Ah, uh, it's a whole bunch of stuff. To all residents of the European Union. The symbol on this unit or package indicates the disposal of units after its life cycle could harm the environment. That's the rose stuff. And we've got some resistors, diodes, just regular instructions. And uh, you've got MP3 player, line level source, speakers, and a 6 to 14 volt 1 amp power supply is needed. Interesting. Fortunately, I've got power supplies to last for years. Here's the circuit board. It's got these bronze type solder pads. You can follow the traces really easily, which is great for somebody who's learning. Then we've got Diode, cap, 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 uh, wire connectors, line in, and the volume pot, resistor, LED, and a switch, power switch, I assume. Pretty simple. Actually, I shouldn't say pretty simple, I mean pretty straightforward. I'm going to try and open it like a normal person does. Dump all this stuff out. Got some little caps. Ooh, these are beefy. These are beefy capacitors. Uh, 1000 microfarad, 25 watt. That's how they're getting, I mean 25 volt. Uh, that's how they're getting 5 watts per channel out of this. Big old diode. Standard 3.5 millimeter jack. Little potentiometer. Switch. A knob for the potentiometer. Our speaker wire holders. Only one resistor. Man, that's barely resistor time, is it? Here's the LED. They say it's blue. Let's see if it's blue. Get my... Voltmeter in continuity mode, and we'll put the red lead on the long, black, and there, that's a nice blue. If it didn't skip out on me. Yes, I know, I'm grounding the leads. That's a pretty LED. So that's it. Looks like a pretty straightforward and quick build. So I'll get the soldering iron heated up and we'll get it put together. Now, even though the values 
are not listed on the board, I don't think I'm going to need a build guide for this. The only thing I do... Okay, so the notch on this goes here. That's the only thing I was questioning. There's a notch on the voltage regulator right here, and as you can see on the circuit board, there's a little notch listed there. But that was the only question because either there's only one of each, like there's one resistor here, which I'll put in, or there are numbers of them, but they're all the same value, so not much to fuss about here. This will probably go together in about five minutes. Well, with me talking, it'll probably take longer than that. I bent the leads in too short. And these, this diode's got really thick wires. Just use my little twisty pliers, my bendy pliers. I'm going to put a bunch of parts on the board first. And these are 104s, I believe. Let me grab my flush cutters. Again, I don't try and wrestle these components out of the tape. I just cut them out because you end up snaggling leads and all that. It's just not pretty. I'm kind of... Oh, I see. I was kind of surprised that they had these three caps, but they're, I believe they're all they're, uh, decoupling for the power supply. And I think we'll solder these up just to get a feel for what the board feels like. One thing I've noted on these Velman Wada parts before, the holes that the component leads go through are pretty big. So you want to put a good bit of solder on it or else it kind of just makes a circle around the lead instead of actually soldering it, which is not always fun. See right there, if you can see that, let me zoom in a little bit here and see if I can get this silly camera to focus when I zoom in. Right here, you may see it's a, it created a ring around the lead. It didn't actually encapsulate the lead. So if you're doing these, just be careful that you get it fully up on the wire or else. Uh, you'll have a enough connection that it might work, but it'll be intermittent, number one. And number two, it's a little more subject to corrosion. Now, on these diode leads, as I said, they're very thick, so you want to have the soldering iron and the solder give a little more heat to it to compensate for the thermal mass of those wires. And I just brushed my finger against one of the wires, oh, that haloed too, brushed my finger against one of the wires, and yip, it maintains a lot of heat. Gosh, I just did it again, and this one is still too hot to touch. Clip these leads off. Let me get my regular side cutters for the thick leads, because I don't want to damage the teeth, I mean the jaws of my flush cutters. Let's see, what are we going to do next? Let's put this switch on first. Switch goes like so. And I'm going to rest it on my pinky finger under the board. And grab another piece of solder if I got one handy. If I have solder handy, yeah, right. I'm going to put that in there like that. And now I'm going to look at it. As you can see, it's a little out of place. 
a little too far up, so I'm just going to reheat this dab of solder. And there, now it's parallel, the edge is parallel with the edge of the circuit board. So I'm happy. That looks nice. And we'll put the LED on here. It doesn't have a plus sign, but it does have a stripe and a flat surface for the negative lead that, there, so you can tell where the negative cathode side of the LED goes. I think I'll do this voltage regulator next. And again, the teeth are a little, a little splayed out. There we go. It went in fine. Put it into the depth that goes in. Now I will need a little bit more solder. Double checking because there's a square pad on the bottom you can also look at. That's where the notch is on the number one pin. Come on, see it's doing it again. It's not, it's making a little halo. And they're good quality boards, they're good quality circuit boards except for that characteristic. And I don't know, it's a combination of the whole size and this bronzy looking material they use. Might even be copper, I don't know. Now we'll put all the caps in. Nice positive indication for the positive lead. Oh, there is one other smaller value cap. This is a uh, 100 nano, I mean 100 micro. Oh, I'm sorry, it's neither a trend, it's an actual, this is the stereo amplifier. I'm sorry for being all confused about that. Now we'll put all the speaker connections on. Now we'll put the pot on. Can't go wrong with that. I mean, you could theoretically put it on backwards, but if you put this one on backwards, you may have other things about spatial awareness that you may want to look into before you go further. Now the power, I mean, input jack. You want to use a good bit of solder. Don't, don't skimp on the solder on this connector because that's where you'll be inserting and removing the input jack a number of times. And the solder, since there's no screws attaching this to the board, the solder is providing all the mechanical stability and support for that jack. Now they do have, uh, for some reason, they gave us a panel nut, I guess because it came with, but we're not going to be using that. Interesting that they chose to, that they chose to use a pot that doesn't have an on-off uh, switch. They have a, their own switch for it. So that's it. Again, that would went together in record time. Pretty straightforward. The music, she goes in here, goes to the potentiometer, so it's pre, it's pre-attenuating. So that's the way she goes. And I'll have to grab various bits and pieces, the speaker, 
find out where my iPod is and give this thing a listen. All right, let's see how this little guy sounds. You need a power supply. Uh, 6 to 14 volts DC at 1 amp. Let's see what I got here. That's 9 volt, 2 amps. That should be good. Let me double check that the connector fits. Oh, it doesn't. Ah. I forgot, it's not a connector, it's two wires. Uh, let me figure out what I can do here. Hold on a minute, let me turn off the camera because I gotta go into my back room, get some parts. Okay, I grabbed out a spare pigtail. We can put it in there and I'm using this, I changed. I'm using this uh, 12 volt, three amp DC, which is a lot power, but this says, says 6 to 14 volts at 1 amp, so, and I've never used this power supply, obviously, so i got to get this silly wire off it. There, we're done that with that. I'm, plug, I'm not going to plug that in yet. Go ahead and connect the power. Red to positive, of course. It should work. Now we've got this little cheesy speaker that I got from some other kit long ago. I need to get a better benchtop speaker. I've got a good, uh, obviously for my Eurorack stuff, I've got a great speaker in a cabinet I built for it for that testing, but for just on the shop bench here. This is four, it will handle four to 33 ohms on the speaker. I think this is an eight, a nominal eight, so that'll be fine. I'm going to be running my iPad into it with a mono cable. I don't have a stereo cable out here for some reason or other, unless I have one in my car that I don't know about. I could go out and look at. Okay, we're going to plug this in and see if my half patootie wiring worked. And we don't have anything yet because I don't have the power on, and I turned the power on, and the LED lights up. Yay! It's a good start. Am I hearing any background hum? I'm hearing a slight bit of background hum. I'm going to turn that back down. Now let me fire up the iPad. Oh, it works! So that's about halfway up. Let me turn the iPad all the way up. Okay. And you can see the speaker cone is really distorting. It can't take the power this thing is putting out. So it works. Works good. Uh, obviously, using a better speaker, using a better... I'm sorry, I didn't have my mic on. Obviously, it works and works fine. Using a better speaker obviously would help a lot. Uh, there'll be a little break in the video while I look and see if I've got something handy. Okay, I've got another speaker cabinet here. Uh, it's got a RCA jack on the end, so what I'll do here is pull these out. I may cut this. I may just 
come back with it all assembled. Yeah. I brought over a uh, nice tweed amp cabinet that's got an 8 inch uh, speaker in it and we'll see if we can drive that. <coughs> it's a Jensen, real good speakers for guitar amps. And I didn't have a female RCA to bare wire. I don't know why. I got to make one up. So I'm not going to use that. I'm going to go. I went ahead and got just some alligator clips and clipped it together. So you may have heard that just come on. We've got a hum. You can hear that. Even though as you get all the way up, the hum goes away. That's interesting. So we'll take the volume down again. Now I'll start playing the music. So that's barely an eighth of a turn up and it's sounding really good. That's a quarter up. Okay, that was a third of the way up, and it's too loud uh, for what, I, what I'm doing right now in the middle of the night, even though nobody can hear me, I live out in the country, but uh, let me turn it up to about half and see how she goes. Oh no, that's very good. That little amp is doing a fine job, and it's really clean. Uh, obviously, the speaker is designed to handle uh, that power and more, so it's not going to break up or distort. But this is a good little amp. Very pleased with it. As you saw, it was a really fast build, and would be very neat for some youngsters, a bedroom or playroom or whatever they have, wherever you want to have a little amp that you built and play your music with a good speaker or two. So I can, I can recommend this one. Very nice little kit. Hope you enjoyed the video.